It's not happening. I did. I read that. I've been trying to catch up. There's so much. I think they're missing an opportunity. It just, you know, so I was reading some previous minutes. Yeah. Thirty seconds, please. Good evening. Welcome to the meeting of the April 22, 2014 meeting of the Nantucket Memorial Airport Commission. As a reminder, this meeting is being recorded. I'd like to welcome Neil Planzer as the newest member of the commission. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. For, Thank you. For putting your name in and joining us. Um, the agenda is in front of you. Are there any comments or concerns about it? 
Hearing none, the agenda, agenda is adopted. We have the minutes of the April 10th meeting. Um, they're not pending. They're in, the, in your material that you got, I believe. Um, so are there any comments or corrections? No, I move approval. Second. A second. Further comment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, we need to ratify the warrant of April 16th. Uh, which is in your packet. The summary is in your packet. Is there a motion to approve? I would make the motion to uh, approve the ratify the warrant of 41614. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carried unanimously. Um, the, the motion to approve the uh, warrant of April 23rd, please. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Mrs. Tobin. Is there a second? No second. Mr. Gasparro seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's carried unanimously. Is there public comment? Um, in view of the special relationship between Mrs. Planzer and Mr. Planzer, a <laughs> uh, special relationship, um, I, in uh, consultation with town council John Giorgio, uh, Discuss the need to um, to uh, get an update on the open meeting law, so that we are all in a position where we are keeping ourselves out of trouble. Uh, and obviously, perception is a big part of the whole issue here. Uh, but in any event, um, Brian Riley, who is with Koppelman and Page, and I understand the firm's expert on matters open meeting. Uh, <laughs> and others uh, has very nicely come down to uh, talk with us. So, Brian, let me turn it over to you, if I may. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, very pleased to be here. Haven't been down on the island for a while. And uh, so I will – I've been doing this for a few years now since they rewrote the, uh, the open meeting law and uh, often a bigger crowd of people that I'm boring to tears, so, so I'll try not to, uh, to do that. And so I do have a, a PowerPoint slide. You have a, a, a printout of them as well. And I'll kind of skim through them. I know you've got a, a busy agenda. Um, but did want to sort of, you know, hit the main points. And um, if, uh, if you have any questions as we go, you know, I'll be happy to, you know, stop right there and do it. Um, so, okay, we can go ahead. It's just our, our legal disclaimer. And uh, but uh, but it is you know as I say I'm sort of summarizing and I may throw out some hypotheticals here and there uh, specific facts of any given situation do change what the outcome might be so um, you know you can you can take what I'm telling you as uh, as a summary of the law and how it applies to a given situation you know can change so just keep that in mind okay. Do you want questions as we go along, or would you rather we so, hold? No, I think as we go along, I think is, is best. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, thank you. Um, so yeah, we do still call it the new open meeting law, although it's uh, it's almost four years old now. So I'll talk about the the kinds of things that are covered, um, how email has come to be very important and, and an issue that the attorney general keeps uh, their eye on. Uh, just briefly about the form of your meeting notices. Uh, I did see your your agenda, which I guess gets posted as the notice, mm -hmm. and, and it looks it looks pretty good to me. Actually, there's a separate notice, is there not? No, it's all done electronically now. Yes, yeah. but is it? But, gets attached to it. but there is a no, form of notice that the town uses electronically to post right. the meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Um, just a few things about you know as as you're conducting your meeting, issues to to watch out for: executive sessions, minute keeping. Uh, and then very briefly at the end, enforcement by the uh, Division of Open Government, which is a, a little branch of the Attorney General's office. It's pretty small. There's only a handful of people there trying to keep up. Um, so generally, uh, you're, you're familiar with the, uh, the Sunshine Laws, Open Meeting, Public Records, and the Conflict of Interest Law. They're all in place. Pretty much every state has them. And they're all there to keep government at every level uh, transparent so the public understands, you know, what's going on, not a lot of backroom deals happening. Uh, even though some of these laws, the general court, the legislature wrote them up and they apply differently to the general court than to the rest of us, but, uh, you know, that's, that's par for the course. 
Uh, as I said, so this, the, this, the open meeting law was uh, substantially rewritten and it took, uh, took effect in July of 2010. Uh, it centralized oversight of uh, implementation and, and enforcement with the Attorney General's office. Before that, it was uh, the District Attorney's office in each county was kind of in charge. They really didn't have uh, authority to do much with it, but that was the office that was uh, looked to. Uh, so it's actually much better that it's all centralized now. And we'll just talk about some of the definitions first. Uh, go ahead. Uh, oh, the certification is much like the conflict law where you're supposed to be given some materials when you uh, assume office. Uh, with, the, um, with the open meeting law, if you join a multi-member board, you're going to be subject to that law. And there is, uh, you're supposed to get some materials, usually from the town clerk, uh, within uh, two weeks. Mr. Pl Excuse me, Mr. Planzer, did you get them? I did get them handed by the town, but they gave, but they told me where to go, and I got them electronically. So okay, right. yeah. Yeah. that's fine. And I think that's probably right. they don't have to kill a tree; they just gave correct. Them. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Um, so it's the you know you're assumed to be familiar at least with the statute. Uh, the attorney general uh, has uh, developed some regulations on certain subjects, and uh, it also says educational materials prepared by the attorney general's office. That's really referring to this open meeting law guide, which you can get on the Division of Open Government website. And it's a pretty good little summary, and it has the statute in the back. So some of the definitions. Uh, a meeting, that's what we're, we're doing now. Uh, deliberation by a public body with respect to any matter within the body's jurisdiction. And then there are certain exceptions to that definition, okay. Um, so one is a quorum at an on-site inspection, as long as the members don't deliberate. Uh, this, uh, I don't know if that could come in handy with this commission, I suppose, but certainly a lot of the land use boards, you know, zoning and planning, conservation, they're asked to be make decisions uh, about certain, uh, you know, private property, and they may want to go out and take a look and see exactly what's, what's on the ground. Uh, the whole board can go out there, they can walk the property, at least within reason, ask a question of the, uh, the property owner or the applicant, uh, and that's not considered a meeting because it would certainly be awkward to expect the public to be able to come onto this property as well. So, um, so it's not a meeting. You don't have to post it. You don't have to take minutes. Uh, you just don't want to sort of huddle in the corner and start talking about the merits of the application. That needs to wait until you're back in your, in your meeting. Uh, same thing at a conference or a training program. So uh, technically I would say you're, you're not in a meeting right now because you're not dealing with airport commission business. You're, you're, this is more of a training program. Uh, same thing. Don't deliberate on matters that uh, are, are being held for your actual meeting. And attendance by a quorum of one board at another board that has a posted. I, I'm sorry. Posted can notes. we go back to the social event? Oh, sure. Uh, piece of that last bullet point. Mm -hmm. um, by deliberation, if there are five of us there, just to use an example, we're going to have an opening for our new general aviation building in a couple of weeks. If there are five of us there and two of us start talking to each other <laughs> about the color of the paint, whatever, and how we're going to suggest to the airport manager that he change the color of the paint, is that a violation because we're all there, even though only two of us are doing it? I'd say that, uh, in general, the, 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 the next term and what we'll talk about is deliberation, mm -hmm. and that's when there's communication by board members on a subject under your jurisdiction, but it's it's uh, communication between a quorum. Okay. So if there's two out of five having a conversation, in general, that's that's okay. Uh, so given that example, I would say you're all right. Okay. If, if the third member wanders over, then you, you need to just be careful. That's all. Um, so if, uh, let's say, the commission has an interest in something that's before the planning board, you can go sit in the audience. You can get up individually and make comments on what's before the planning board. That's fine. It's not a meeting of this commission. Uh, once again, don't sit in the back and start, you know, talking as a commission. Uh, the last one only applies to, to state boards. Okay. So just a few things to keep in mind with concerning uh, meetings, especially if on that last example you're going to attend a planning board meeting and you think, well, we may hear some stuff we want to talk about right away. Uh, you can hold a meeting right after the planning board meeting, but you will have had to post it at least 48 hours ahead of time and with an agenda and everything else. 
Um, the do not drive to the meeting together or sit together, that's a little extreme, I think. We put that in there just to kind of, uh, you know, you need to be aware that people are watching you, of course. And, um, you know, if, uh, if you've got a meeting coming up and three or four of you ride out in the same car, uh, even though you may have been talking about the weather the whole way, uh, you know, somebody may see that and say, hmm, I wonder if they were making decisions before they even got here. Um, it's not a violation to come together like that, but uh, just sort of keep, uh, as the chairman said, you know, that people are watching and perception mm -hmm. is important. Um, if you are at another meeting uh, and you want to get up and speak just at a, as a citizen, uh, that's obviously fine, but you may want to just be sure that your people don't think that you're speaking on behalf of the commission. Uh, and a joint meeting, if two boards are having a joint meeting, then both have to post, both have to take minutes. Uh, so then briefly, the, the uh, this Division of Open Government, when they do get complaints in, they'll look into it and they'll issue a, a written decision, uh, fairly informal in general, but they'll, just, they'll announce whether they have found a violation or not. So in this example, this was a, a school committee that was at a Board of Selectmen meeting. They were talking about uh, a ballot question. And during the, the meeting, the members of the school committee realized, well, it would be nice if we could sort of speak with one voice here to this. Um, so they ducked out into the hall, had a quick two-minute thing, came back in and said, well, here's, here's the school committee's position. Perfectly honest. They weren't trying to pull a fast one on anybody. They announced, you know, what they were. But they met as a, a quorum of the board met out in the hall. They hadn't posted a, a meeting. No, the public wasn't, you know, allowed to listen. Uh, so that was a violation. So the AG said it's a violation. And as they do with almost all their written determinations, they say, you know, now, now you understand. You know, don't let it happen again. Uh, the, the division really isn't out there looking for blood on these things. They want to educate, you know, people who are serving on these boards. Uh, as I said, another term that's defined is deliberation, oral or written communication through any medium, including email. Uh, between or among a quorum of the public body on its, its own business. Uh, and again, there are some exceptions. Okay, thanks. Um, Just back a little bit. If okay. I may, uh, there have been occasions mm -hmm. when I have sent out something to the commission because it was over a weekend or something and there was nobody in the office who could send it out and I thought it was important for the commission to have that and it would be subject to deliberation. I've always said at the end of it or at the beginning of the email, do not reply. Mm -hmm. um, is that all right? That's a, that's a very good idea, the do not reply. Reply all is the most dangerous button there is. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, what, the, what the Attorney General has developed on this is that uh, well, some of the exceptions, let me see, let me just, I'll just get to it. Um, yeah, if del deliberation, including email, so uh, an email that mm -hmm. goes out for a quor among a quorum, mm -hmm. you know, that at least is a red flag. But what's excluded from the definition of, def is of uh, deliberation is uh, communication that's just distributing a meeting agenda. Uh, scheduling information, all you're doing is saying, you know, we're not going to have enough people here on Thursday, who's available Monday. That's a, you know, just a strictly administrative matter, uh, and that's not a violation. Mm -hmm. And distributing uh, other meeting materials, you know, reports, maybe a letter that you received that you want people to see. Uh, that's all fine as long as you don't start expressing your own opinions about it, because then the Attorney General will, will, can look at that and say, well, when you just sent out that consultant report, that was fine. But then when you started pointing out what you thought were the important, you know, parts on page 12, you know, that's the kind of thing that's supposed to be discussed in an open session that the public can attend. So that's, that's kind of the distinction between what is okay <laughs> to send out to the group by email uh, and what's not. Uh, I, I think you mentioned uh, that you might do this on the weekend when you don't have the staff to mm -hmm. do it for you. Uh, it's always safer if you do have a you know staff person. Uh, yeah, Mr. Raptor, for example, if, if he sends out something to all the commission members, then there hasn't been any deliberation at all. Uh, as long as you don't, then the reply all. You know, watch out for that. Um, 
there's a couple of examples in the, the, uh, the handout. As I say, one uh, school building committee member had put together a PowerPoint they were going to use at a town meeting, emailed that to the other members saying, you know, here's what I've been working on, here's, here's why I wrote this that way. Nobody wrote back, and so none of the other members participated in this violation, but the AG did say, well, you were, you know, you, you were soliciting comments and you were explaining things, and that is supposed to wait for your meeting. If you had just sent out the PowerPoint saying, here's what I want to talk about on Monday, period, uh, he would have been fine. Um, <clears throat> now, this can also happen. You get an email from a private citizen, and you reply back, and you copy your commission members. You know, now, now you're, you're on that slippery slope. Uh, the Attorney General actually says that it's, it can be difficult to, uh, you know, to make a distinction between when a communication is purely administrative or whether it's got some substantive discussion. And so they say, our best advice continues to be that public bodies not communicate over email at all except for distributing agendas, scheduling meetings, and, meetings and distributing documents. So that's, that's always the safest course. So if you get an email from a constituent mm -hmm. and you believe it's something that should be deliberated by the board, how do you get that to you? Do, does it go to the administrative staff and say, please put this on the agenda, and then that's done? Does it go to Dan? How do, you, how do you get the transfer of the information mm -hmm. from the constituent to deliberation? Probably the best way is, is for you to send that to your administrative staff and say, I'd like to, you know, can you get this to the chairman? I'd like to, you know, have this come up next week. Uh, if you were just to send it to Dan, let's say, you know, there's not a quorum involved, so that's okay. But even then, I would say try to refrain from saying, you know, this letter is really important. This letter is wrong, and here's why. You know, that's that's part of the, the substantive discussion. So you would just send to Janine, we received this letter from the constituent. Please uh, uh, show it to Dan and let me know if it's going to be on the agenda. Something like yeah, that. something like that. Perfect. Something okay, like that you. is fine. Mm -hmm. And excuse me, but not to let the rest of the commissioners know through Janine, for Janine to send it to us, or just to send it to Dan? Just want to clarify that. Uh, well, uh, that's I uh, guess that's sort of case by case. So, you know, again, if 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 Janine sends it to all five members, okay. there's there's no violation involved. Okay. That's fine, because she's because she's not a board member, it's, it's, right? Okay. Thank yeah. You. Um, I mean, isn't that really a distinct, in a sense, a distinction <laughs> about a difference? Because if I send it to Janine and I say I think this is something that's really important and we need to discuss. Obviously, I have authority to determine what's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So, if Mrs. Topham said it to Janine and said, I think this is something that's really important that we really need to discuss, uh, please get it on the agenda or however that should be worded. I mean, what's the difference, realistically, in sending it to the commission? Well, yeah, like I say, it's. Um, perception. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of perception. Uh, although. Uh, you know, again, if she sent it to the other members and said, I hope we can talk about this at a future meeting, you leave it, you know, doesn't start talking about why she thinks it's important. Um, you know, that, the example I just gave, you should be okay because that's kind of administrative. You know, here, this is something that concerns us. You know, maybe we can talk about it. I, I was thinking more of something, sorry, Dan, that something might be FYI, just for their information that either we've gotten it or we heard it or received it from somebody else and not necessarily to even say it's going to go on the agenda. I think that would be up to Dan and or Tom or when they got the information. That's just my personal feeling. But if it's wrong, please let me know. Well, it's uh, that's the kind I mean, you're right. It's kind of gray. Um, but uh, but that's the kind of thing if the Attorney General gets a complaint, that's what they look at. They say, well, was did this go between, was this distributed among a quorum? And were they expressing opinions? Were they saying why they think this is important? They, they have a very narrow view of what's an administrative communication. It opens it up, too. I think if you send it to everybody and then we reply to it, if anybody replies to it, then, then yeah. with any sort of opinion or any... Exactly. That goes to the whole commission as well. Then that's, that's yeah, then you're in violation. So if, you, if it always goes through Janine, then it's cleaner. And usually Janine yeah. has put do not reply all for it so that we're aware that it's just for our right. to read and, and not to reply. Right, right. At least that's what I'm finding out. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so just, you know, be, be careful with email. It's an incredibly, you know, mm -hmm. efficient tool, but uh, as far as the open meeting law is concerned, you, you just have to be careful. Um, okay, well, we'll talk about the public bodies, another, another uh, defined term. It's a, any multi-member board, commission, committee, or subcommittee within executive or legislative branch, you know, within the town, however it's created, elected, appointed, or otherwise constituted, and that a uh, subcommittee shall include any multi-member body created to advise or make recommendations to another public body. So it's very, very broad. Um, there's some kinds of multiple member groups which may not fall under that, but for the most part it's gonna, it's gonna catch just about everyone. Um, so a subcommittee, um, if, a, if a board, let's say, you know, the, the commission you're at a meeting and you decide there's one particular issue you'd like two or three members to look into and you designate them as a subcommittee, that subcommittee is also going to be subject to the open meeting law. Have to post, post agenda, take minutes, uh, and be open to the public. Um, there, uh, there's an, a, an exception t for a committee or a subcommittee that's appointed by a single officer. Uh, and that's because a single officer, of course, um, you know, whether it's whether it's Tom's position, the town manager, superintendent of schools, uh, you know, he or she is not subject to the open meeting law. And if there's something which is their decision to make, but they want a committee to, you know, do some research and report back, um, the uh, actually the appeals court has said that that is not that kind of group is not subject to the open meeting law because the decision maker is not subject to it. But same token, if, if you or the Board of Selectmen appoint a, uh, you know, advisory committee to do something and come back, um, in general, that's I mean, going to be subject. Really, I mean, I, I'm not arguing with their decision about whether it's part of the law or not, but it seems very disingenuous to exclude a committee which is advising somebody, um, especially an appointed committee, rather than, a, you know, the town manager, for example. That is not sorry. That is not subject to the open meeting law, because the um, they can do just as much damage <laughs> <laughs> as a group appointing a uh, advising a public body. Right. That's true. I, I see what you're saying, but uh, and and certainly that group, you know, a town manager appoints a committee. That group. You know, they may want the public to come. That may be the whole point I mean, of the group. I mean, but, it seems uh, sort of ridiculous that we went through this when we hired Mr. Rafter, that we had to do it all basically in, in open session, mm -hmm. whereas the town manager can hire a police chief and gets advice from people and so forth, and that's all done behind closed doors. Well, that's true. That's the way the but open meeting the, law is written. It only yeah. applies to multi-member yeah. groups. Yep. Correct. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, we can skip uh, to the next one. Uh, your meeting notice. We, we talked a little bit about that. Um, that uh, for any any meeting uh, of your your commission, uh, the notice has to be posted with at least forty eight hours ahead of time, and that excludes uh, weekends and legal holidays. So uh, if you're going to meet on a Monday, it has to be posted by the end of end of Thursday. If Monday's a holiday and you're meeting on Tuesday, it also is the end of Thursday. And it must be uh, filed with the town clerk. And I know it probably happens electronically pretty much at this point, but uh, it needs to be filed with the town clerk and posted in a manner that's visible 24 hours a day. Um, the way the, the law was written, it sounded as though it r literally had to be on the building where the town clerk's office was. So people were all up in arms. Well, do we need to get a bulletin board and put a lights on it, or what can we do? Uh, and initially, the, the AG's office was saying they didn't think on the town website was good enough because not everybody has access to that. They did finally change their position on that. So that's, if that's your 24-hour method, that's okay. Uh, it, does, it is sp still supposed to be filed with the town clerk, however. So where is the official posting of that? Town clerk. Physically or electronically? I believe, I haven't been down there to look lately, but I believe they used to it anyway, put it on the bulletin board as well. 
Yeah, that's that's kind of the, the old-fashioned way. I mean, it, it, it was, until very recently, Janine actually had to take a hand-filled-out card down, yeah. physically deliver it to the town clerk's office, and that was what uh, comprised the meeting notice. If for some reason the electronic version conflicts with the posted version, obviously the posted version is the one that is the legal, I may use that term, mm -hmm. posting. But does that conflict create a problem? Well, I suppose it could because actually both of them or the legal posting. You know, it, it's supposed to be in both spots. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess worst case scenario, you had a completely wrong building in time or something. It, probably the best answer would be to put off the meeting until you can make sure that it's you know agrees on both. Okay. Because otherwise, you know, you, sub, you someone could be complaining that they showed up at the wrong place. Now, the alternate location point that you make on this uh, on this slide. Um, we post it also on the airport's website, as well as on, okay. the, on the town webs. Does this mean if it's not posted by 5 o'clock Friday night on the airport's website, it's no, the meeting notice is no good, even though it's posted properly at the town clerk? It, uh, it, it needs to be posted 48 hours ahead. Both, both places. Both places. Okay. The clerk's office and the other one that you're using. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the uh, one thing that the clerk's office copy that's good for is that the clerk typically will, in one way or another, have kind of a time and date stamp on it. Because if the complaint comes into the attorney general's office that this meeting was never posted or it was posted, you know, 20 hours ahead, not enough, um, the first thing they're going to say is, well, you know, where's the where's that clerk's notice? Where what evidence do you have that this was posted 48 hours ahead of time? And that's usually where they look. They will look. So I don't, I don't want to belabor this, but that confused me a little bit. Okay. I thought there was <laughs> one posting requirement at the town clerk's office. Janine, yes. uh, Dan's <clears throat> question drove you to say that they both at the airport website and the town clerk's office have to be posted, and why would that be? I understand from mm -hmm. it's a good thing to do, but if you've mm -hmm. got the legal requirement, town's clerk office, and we're laying on the airport, is that throw it out of kilter? Uh, because the the uh, the statute itself says it must be filed with the town clerk's office, which is part of the legal mm -hmm. uh, posting, um, and it must be posted in a manner conspicuously visible to the public at all hours. And both of them are subject to this 48-hour requirement. So any any posting so visible to the public uh, 24 hours a day is, has to be up there by... It's also 48 yeah, hours. I mean, if somebody hours. chose to post at six places, they would all have to be there on time. So, that's what it, you're saying. Well, it's it, they're supposed to be the clerk's office and then one sort of official, you know, the one that, that you consider is, well, is your official so, one that's available to everyone. Well, I guess we'd consider the town clerk and the town's website the, the town's official website, one. Yes. Um, I don't put the actual meeting posting on our website. I just put that they're, that they're having a meeting on our website. Well, that's okay. what happens <laughs> on the town's website, too. So, no, no. You, you can actually click onto the official posting. Oh, can you? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I so I, I just, I just want to know, uh, we could choose not to put it on the airport website. That'd be fine, right? Because mm -hmm. we have it at the town clerk's office. Yeah. Now, we could also, I think what, what I heard Janine say, is informational purposes. We're mentioning it on the airport website that there'll be a town meeting. That's not... I hate to use the word, but that is not, in quotes, an official posting. It's the town clerks that is posting. But I'm confused now whether or not we, we could say we're not going to post it and everybody be happy. Or we can't just say informationally, and if she's in it, uh, I'm just using Janine as an example, she posts it 23 hours in advance, the whole meeting has to be moved. Well, I, I, let me try to address that. The what's what, what's supposed to be filed with the town clerk and let's just say post posted on the town website um, is not just the time, date, and place of your meeting, but also your agenda. Your notice of the topics that the that, that the chair has uh, has listed, expecting to come up. Now somewhere else, you may also have uh, 
you know, maybe on the airport's website, you know, the airport commission is going to be meeting on the following dates in 2014. That's perfectly fine, and it serves a good, you know, it serves a good public service there. But as far as the open meeting law is concerned, the real notice needs to have your spe specific list of topics. So I want to nail this down. So mm -hmm. we could we post it at the town clerk's office. The airport can put in put in without regard to the 24 hours, be 23 hours. Say there'll be a town meeting on April 22nd at five o'clock in uh, four fairgrounds. They can even say, and by the way, if you're interested, the agenda is available at the town clerk's office. And she does that doesn't mean that we then have to. Uh, scrupulously meet that 24 hour piece, correct? Uh, that example, I'd say that's in addition to what the open meeting law requires. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got you. Thank you very much. No problem. Uh, let's see, maybe we can skip a couple here. Um, one more. Okay. Well, I think we've hit that one too, actually. <laughs> Um, okay. Oh yes. The uh, so you may you may have a meeting on a Tuesday night, and you've got a whole lot of a whole bunch of stuff on it, and you, it's it's 11:30, and you've really had enough. Can you say let's call it a night and come back tomorrow at 7:30? No, you can't unless you posted Wednesday night's meeting 48 hours as a ahead. separate meeting. You have to plan it ahead. You have to post it as a separate meeting or yes. a possible continuation. Yes. This is different from the way town meeting works. Yeah. You know, town meeting can meet on April 22nd, adjourn at 11 and come back the next night or come back next Tuesday or what have you. The so, meeting law doesn't apply to so town meeting. So the board meeting. of selectmen and the finance board and planning board and so forth have to post separate meetings for each night the town meeting might happen. In other words, if it goes on f for four yes. nights, it, if yeah, if if they if if they think it's going to meet on a on a Monday and then carry over till Tuesday, and they want to be able to and have then a, go over to Wednesday and Thursday as they sometimes do, and here. then and they want to <laughs> be able to have a board meeting during or before the town meeting, they will have need to post it each but one of those. They can't all sit together if they don't ahead. post it, right? Well, you can't you can't talk about board business if you haven't <laughs> right. posted it ahead of time, and the. <laughs> public get to listen to it as well. Um, uh, you may, I don't know if this would apply to the commission, but, you know, a, a planning board, let's say, if they're going to have a, they're going to talk about a new zoning bylaw, they also have to, you know, put stuff in the newspaper. If there's legal requirements like that. That's di that's separate from the open meeting law. They they have to, just because you've done that doesn't mean you've met the open meeting law. You also have to do this the 48 hours. Uh, okay. Let me do the next one. Uh, the next one, emergency. Uh, it's not dealt with much in the statute itself, but what the what the Attorney General's office says is that if you have an actual emergency, you can hold a meeting in less than 48 hours. You know, you haven't posted your notice, you can you can do it. But they have a very narrow view of that, and they say we really to be an emergency, we really would expect it to be a, some sort of health and safety issue. Uh, and not something like, oops, we were supposed to sign this contract by tomorrow and we forgot about it. Let's have an emergency meeting and sign it. Uh, they, they, wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't agree that that was a, a proper emergency. Even if the funding would go away? If you well, didn't. you know, I mean, <laughs> I suppose you could weigh the, the pros and cons and have a meeting that doesn't comply with the open meeting law and, and cure it, you know, try to cure it later. Uh, even if you do have an emergency meeting, uh, like the uh, you know the selectmen. There's a there's a blizzard bearing down, and mm -hmm. the selectmen want to talk to the you know DPW superintendent about what to do about you know roadways. Uh, you know, have that meeting. That's certainly a public public safety thing. Uh, but we would recommend then, even then, you know, take some minutes at your next meeting, sort of explain what the emergency meeting was about. You can attach those minutes to the your new minutes uh, to be as transparent as possible. Okay. So the notice, I've touched on this, the notice also must include a listing of topics that the chair reasonably anticipates will be discussed at the meeting. And so the, the difference from this from the old open meeting law, which didn't say anything about what was on the notice other than time, date, and place, uh, is that you want to let the public understand what subjects uh, you're expecting to get to. 
uh, as I said, your, uh, you know, your, your meeting notice you know, for, for tonight does that. And the, um, and so they, they don't want to, well, I won't go through in detail some of the other decisions they've made, but they, they don't want to see, for example, um, as an agenda item, you know, town meeting. They, they want to see, you know, well, what, you know what, what articles are you going to be talking about? Are you going to be voting on things? Are you going to be, you know, talking about a funding request? They want more than just sort of, you know, So if, if we're going to post a meeting for our town meeting, to concur with town meeting, it should list the specific articles, for example, that might come up in discussion? That's the... Uh, the the, that's what the way the attorney general has, specific, you know, specifically with town meeting articles. That's what they have said. Mm -hmm. Well, they do qualify it. That says a listing of topics that the chair reasonably anticipates. Yes. Will be discussed at the meeting. So, if someone from the audience raises one that you would not have reasonably anticipated, then that's that's contrary. I mean, that's not a violation mm -hmm. of the open meeting law, correct? That's that's correct. That is correct. But. All right, maybe that answered my question. My question was, if something were to come up on an article unrelated to the airport, uh, up on its face unrelated to the airport, one that the chairman would not reasonably mm -hmm. think was going to be on the agenda for the airport commission meeting, um, um, and the question, for example, was, could the airport lend the town a fire truck because the or give the town a fire truck because the town's fire truck is broken. Right. Uh, and the commission would have to respond to that. Um, and I certainly would not feel comfortable responding to it without the commission agreeing on the response. Right. Mm -hmm. um, can I do that? Can we discuss it? And then so under this... So what I, yeah, what, what I would say to that is, you know, you've... You can't, uh, I, most likely, you wouldn't justify that as an emergency meeting. But if you already have a meeting scheduled, We're, it's, it's and, it has, <laughs> and it has, uh, you know, topics mm. A through E, mm -hmm. um, and now you've just learned about this new issue, and you... It comes you, up during like the, the right. course of the warrant, right. the discussion about the warrant article. So you want to talk about it. You can. The Attorney General does say the statute says only the topics that the chair reasonably anticipated were going to come up are the ones that have to be on the posted notice. Mm -hmm. So if something new comes up, uh, can you discuss it? Yes, you, ha you have not violated the open meeting law, absolutely. They, they always stick in <laughs> as part of their answer. Uh, we, you know, we do strongly encourage boards, at least where appropriate, to put it off until the next meeting where, the, where it can mm -hmm. be on the posted notice. And that way, the people who live yeah, on the other side of town. In that instance, I example I gave you. It no, can't I hear be it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. So that it, it's not a violation. Okay. It is not a violation. Um, Hope it never happens. But. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But in general, you know, it may be something else that you say. Oh, well, that's an interesting, you know, mm -hmm. subject. But it, you know, it could be that members of the public, you know, who aren't here tonight, mm -hmm. might be interested to listen to that too. So let's put it off till next week's well, meeting and put it on the agenda. That's that's the the advice that they give. Uh, let's see. Yeah, one, they, um, I won't get into executive session yet, but uh, just as an example, one of the things they decided was, you know, a, a lot of boards that deal with collective bargaining groups used to put, uh, it, we're, we're starting to put, you know, Collective bargaining period, or, you know, collective bargaining update, or something like that, and um, with an executive session, and the AG said, "Well, we know you can, you can go in and talk about collective bargaining strategy, or even meet with the other, you know, meet with the union, in executive session. That's fine, but the public, there's no reason you can't tell the public which bargaining unit you're meeting with. So they wanted to say." You know, see, uh, you know, collective bargaining negotiations with fire department. Uh, that's so. That, that's kind of the the philosophy that this office has. Is you know, unless unless you're talking about something, you're going to talk about in executive session, and you're going to tip your hand. You know, really prejudice, literally mm -hmm. prejudice the town's position. You should at least identify the subject you're going to be talking about. 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's. Okay, yeah, this one from Natick, which is where I live. That's the example about the town meeting uh, articles. They just had town meeting update school committee on their agenda. The AG said that's you know that, that's not enough information. Where, I'm sorry, where are you? Um, well, these page? aren't numbered. Oh, but it's, page seven. Oh, page, yeah, first top of page seven. I'm sorry. Uh, the, the school committee on their agenda just said town meeting update. And the AG said that you really didn't give the public notice um, of what you're going to be talking about. Um, here's, here's what you should have put. Discussion of town meeting warrant articles 1, 9, 10, 18, etc. The school committee may vote to recommend action on these articles at town meeting. Now, we, when these started coming out, you know, we, we kind of concluded that there's definitely people in this office that never go to town meeting <laughs> or, or maybe any other kind of local meeting. But, um, but you know, the, the, the philosophy, I guess, is, is sound, that the, the public should be able to look at these meeting notices and say, oh, okay, I get the gist of what's coming, you know. Maybe this, this week doesn't interest me, but I'll, I'll watch for next week. Um, okay, why don't we skip to the next one? Okay, actually, I already talked about this one. This is where if it's a new matter that comes up, uh, you know, six hours before the meeting or even during the meeting, and it's not something that was reasonably anticipated, you can talk about it and deal with it. The AG just recommends that, in the most part, we prefer you to put it off so it can be posted on a, on a you know, meeting agenda. Uh, yeah, this also is from another decision they made where, let's say, 24 hours before your meeting, uh, the chair learns of a, of a topic that really should be, you know, addressed at the meeting, and it's, it's too late for the 48 hours. Well, if you it, – it's uh, it wasn't anticipated 48 hours ahead, so you're, it's not a violation. But if you can, if it's something that comes up at the meeting, there's nothing you can do. If it's 24 hours ahead – and you really think it should be talked about, uh, you know, update your agenda on the website as soon as you can. So at least there's what, some notice what, out there. What's a reasonable time period? Six hours, four hours, 20 minutes? Well, 20 minutes is probably not going to do much good. But if it's, you know, if it's, if it's the morning of the meeting and you've just learned about this thing and you want to talk about it, um, you know, it, their advice is, you know, update your agenda so at least maybe some people see it. And then... Uh, and then just deal with it as, as if it was something that came up at the last minute. You know, if you want to deal with it, you can. Um, again, if it, if it can wait, um, you know, put it off. Can you discuss it and, and then vote at another meeting or not? Or you just shouldn't deal with it at Well, all? I mean, it depends what it is. The, um, you know, the conservative advice is put off the whole thing, mm -hmm. discussion as well. Um, but that would be one that would be one way to... To deal with it, you know, let's let's talk about this thing which somebody in the audience just brought up. Let's talk about it. Let's not make a final decision until next week, and then you know, if anybody else comes in, maybe we can continue the discussion a little bit before we vote. You know, kind of finesse it that way. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, I've already covered that one. Uh, meeting location. Um, it's both the uh, Open Meeting Law and, of course, the Americans with Disabilities Act require public meetings uh, to be in places that are accessible uh, to, to people with, uh, with handicaps. Um, you can hold a meeting in a private building. The Open Meeting Law doesn't, doesn't say anything about that, and it's certainly not a violation if you do. However, it must be accessible to everybody, and the, whoever owns the building has to be willing to let, you know, the the audience in as well. Um, occasionally you might uh, realize that the, the meeting room that you've planned to have, you know, isn't as big as this one and you think there's going to be a whole bunch of people so you want to move it. Uh, if you're just moving to a different room in the same building, that's probably not a big deal. Just put a notice on the original door, uh, wait a few extra minutes. Uh, if it's a different building, um, you know, we, we've told people that that's, that's okay, but it's um, you know, it, it shouldn't be too far away, and you need to be sure that people who show up at the first one um, have a chance to, you know, to relocate. So maybe, you know, don't start for half an hour. 
Yeah, I certainly wouldn't recommend that as a as a practice, but uh, but you you could still go forward if you for some reason or you know who knows maybe you lost power in one building and you want to move across the street to another one something like that. Uh, that can be done. Oh yes, yeah, you you can leave it there. Um, it is the the open meeting law doesn't actually say anywhere that you have to literally have the door open to your room. Um, you may be somewhere where it's going to be too noisy to leave the door open, and so you want to keep it shut. Um, that's fine. It's not a violation, but it should be clear to anyone who's coming in after the fact to know that they can come in. You know, again, notice on the door, you know, open meeting in session, please close the door behind you, something like that. Open meeting, but no open door. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, if the door is locked, that's, that's a problem. Okay, yeah, we sometimes get asked, uh, you know, we have a, our board has something we really want to get to. We've got more than 48 hours. You know, can we meet on a Saturday? Can we meet on a Sunday? Can we meet on Patriots Day? Uh, the open meeting law doesn't say anything about that. So it's, you're okay to do that. Uh, again, the AG would add advice that, you know, we encourage you to have your meeting at kind of times, dates and times where it's convenient for the public. Uh, but if you really want to meet on a Sunday morning, you've got some Monday deadline and it's Wednesday, you know, you can post in time and you can do that. It would still have to be open to the public, though, on that Sunday morning. Uh, oh, yeah, um, the public participation. The open meeting law, a lot of, a lot of people who, who don't serve on boards I uh, think that a public meeting means I can go in there and I can vent on anything I feel like. That's not what it says. And in fact, it says that anyone who wants to address a, a board conducting a public meeting can only do so through the chair. Uh, the chair is not required to recognize anyone. Uh, a public hearing where you, it's, uh, abutters have concerns, that's a little bit different. That's kind of the whole point is to hear from the abutters. Uh, but in general, uh, you, know, you know, a public hearing doesn't mean anyone who comes in uh, can speak. And the chair can also uh, limit participation. You know, okay, we've got a lot of people here. You want to be heard, you know, three minutes each, um, something like that. And you want to just kind of, kind of keep an eye on what's going to happen if it's a very volatile debate. You don't want to get into, uh, you know, people assassinating each other's characters and, uh, that sort of thing, um, and uh, yeah, li you know, limiting the total time that it's going to happen. So you know, again, the, the chair has a lot of discretion in this. You may decide, if, even though you get a bunch of people who come in and they want to be heard on something, uh, if you don't think it's appropriate, you don't have to recognize anybody. Uh, the the AG has gotten some complaints on that, so where somebody. Uh, came in and complained they weren't allowed to speak, and they filed a petition and the board refused to take up the topic. The Attorney General said, hey, open meeting law doesn't require them to do that. Do they have an appeal when a board refuses to take up the subject? Open um, in general, no. I mean, it certainly doesn't violate the open meeting law, and there's nothing there's nothing in the open meeting law, and or I don't think anywhere else, that you know guarantees you that that's kind of what this petition was. I mean, this uh, opinion was getting at is they some group came in with a petition, or everybody had signed it, and they said we want you to talk about this issue, and the board refused to. Uh, the attorney general said they're not they're not required to. You know, they're the ones who set their agenda. They're the ones who have stuff under their own jurisdiction, and they can't be forced to take up something. Maybe there's some odd exceptions to that, but in general, I don't, I don't think so. If the, the board, if the board has a debate on the subject, suppose uh, three of the members don't want it and two do, and uh, they want to have a debate on that. That has to, be, that has to be part of the open meeting law. So they would have to put on that debate on the open meeting law, correct? It would have to be on the agenda. For it would have meeting. to be on the agenda before anybody could talk about it, yes. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I meant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's why I think they say at the Board of Selectmen meetings, 
when people get up for public or when they solicit public comment that it has to do with anything that has to be about something that has nothing is not on the agenda for that meeting. Okay, Dan, I'm sorry. Could you say that again? I didn't quite. At, at the town, at the board of selectmen meetings, at the beginning when they or when they ask for public comment, they always say, and it's on the agenda, I believe, as well, mm -hmm. that. Um, the only subjects that can be addressed are ones that are not otherwise on the agenda for that evening. Okay, so the petition folks could come to the opening of the meeting in public comment and say, I have a public comment. You would, you, the, the chair would recognize right. them. Or not, but you would recognize them. They would come up I and say, I think if you what? ask for public comment, you have to recognize mm -hmm. them. Okay. Whoever puts their hand up. So you, they would come up. Now, you could say, on that subject, I'm going to allow you. You, I think you said three minutes. Mm -hmm. We could limit that, and they would say their piece, and then they would sit down. The board can then deal Or with if they started off on a tangent, I could have them sit down right away. Mm -hmm. now, and, thank you. And once, once that subject was out, then the board could deliberate it in the open meeting, because that, that goes under, well, I did not reasonably expect that to come up. Let, may I suggest what I would think was to yeah. be the proper approach? Please. It's my discretion as to if they put the chair's discretion, not personalizing it, it's the chair's discretion of, as to whether a matter is going to be discussed or not. And if this is about something that the board is not otherwise discussing, the chair, theoretically, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, has the right to say, uh, well, thank you for the petition, but we're not going to discuss that. Mm -hmm. Or more logically, one might say, we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting to discuss amongst ourselves as to whether we want to have further discussions. Right. And we'll go from there. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I'd throw in there is even though, you know, this commission and, and most municipal boards, frankly, they do have a public comment period, but they're not required to. It's really just a policy decision. If you decide not to have it, then nobody has the right to come in and, as and be long recognized. As we have it and nobody gets speaks, it's fine. Yeah, you're all set. <laughs> Um, it, just a word on uh, on recording. Um, the open meeting law says that anybody, a member of the public, has the right to make an audio or video, video recording of an open session. Uh, the chair does have some discretion to, uh, you know, make sure that it's not going to interfere with the meeting. You can say, you know, okay, you can do that, but you know, keep it off to this side, uh, mm -hmm. not right in, right in front of us. Um, but they they have to be allowed uh, to do that, and. There is a, uh, you know, there's a, basically a wiretap criminal statute out there that says it's illegal to record someone without their knowledge. And so this always made sort of a interesting Does that mean we question. should not only be saying that we're recording people, but that this is being televised? Um, no, I, mean, I don't think it's a violation if you don't say it's being televised. Okay. But, but the... Uh, so there was there was at least a, the possibility before that somebody could be in the front row making a recording and nobody in the audience knew about it. Well, did that violate this criminal statute? They tried to address that in the open meeting law by saying anyone can make a recording, but they need to come in, notify the chair that they're doing it, and the chair should make an announcement to the room that uh, you know this is being recorded. I mean if. In this case, you've got it being recorded anyway, and you make the announcement. Right. So that but if somebody else comes in, if Bobby's sitting there in the front row <laughs> with his recorder, um, is it appropriate basically to make a comment at the beginning? If I think he's recording this, should I make a comment that it's, if anybody is recording, they should be? The, absolutely. The law actually says that someone who's making that recording is supposed to come notify you at the beginning, when they mm -hmm. start, that, they, that they're making the recording, okay. just so the room is aware that that happens. Yeah, nowadays, so many uh, things are either recorded for TV or broadcast live. It's kind of, you know. Yeah, I, hate the, I hate the thin the slice. Uh -huh. uh, Dan said at the beginning of this meeting that this is being recorded. That is correct. So if we have an audience of five people and they're all also recording it, we don't have to identify them. Since we've already announced, Dan has already announced it's being recorded. I think that's correct because the idea is that. People know it's being but theoretically, but even nice. then, they're supposed to identify themselves to me, to the chair, right? That's what it says. Yeah. That is what it says. Okay. You know, I, right. I think the um, 
because you know the town is recording this and you make that announcement the 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 uh you know the purpose of this is so that everybody in the room understands they're being recorded so they you know they can watch what they say uh so as long as there's some kind of announcement mm -hmm. that's made but but what it literally says is anyone who wants to make a recording is supposed to notify you and you announce it to the room okay but yeah you don't have to do it six times right Um, okay, we'll do the next one. Uh, remote participation. We've done that. We're, I think, pretty You're much up to speed. We did it last week. <laughs> okay. So. I, won't, I won't go over then. Although, um, although I do have a question. Okay. okay. No, I'm sorry. Because um, it's okay, but you have to have a quorum in the room. Yes. So you're, you're a five-member commission. You cannot have two members in the room and three people calling in or Skyping or however it's being handled. That's, that doesn't comply. You need a quorum physically in the room. Physically in the room. Yes. Uh, and then, uh, you know, everybody, however you arrange it, everyone in the room was supposed to be able to hear that person who's calling in or uh, video conference or whatever else it might be. Um, okay, I'll do, I'll try to move a little quicker. Uh, executive sessions, I mean, you're, you're familiar with what those are. The law has uh, ten purposes that allow you to... Uh, Excuse me, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh, going back to that remote participation, yep. note here says as long as the chair and quorum are physically present. So oh, it requires the, the chair to be well, present? Well, it, it, requires, it requires whoever's chairing the meeting. If, okay. if Dan so wasn't Dan going to be here, exist. somebody who's here would have to chair the meeting. So he couldn't chair from, yeah. he couldn't chair from another location. No, I don't think so. No, if, right. if uh, you know, like, like typically Dan is, is chairing the meeting, you know, recognizing speakers and that kind of thing. If he's going to be the one calling in, somebody who's in the room needs to be the chairman for that, for that night. Mm -hmm. Okay. That way they could see somebody in the audience where Dan would not be. Able right. To see right. Yes. right. Oh, yes, yeah, it would. Would, be a little, <laughs> would be a little difficult. Do you have your TV on? <laughs> Live TV? Um, so I say there, there's ten purposes that can be used for an executive session, and that's what allows a board to go behind closed doors and have a discussion out of the public eye. Uh, and so those are they're relatively narrow, and the attorney general reads them that way. Um, it needs to be if you're planning to have an executive session, it should be on the agenda. Uh, this doesn't happen very often. In, in theory, something could come up at the meeting where you realize, well, you know, I didn't expect, the chair didn't expect to have a, a reason for an executive session, but now we really could use one, and, you know, it's, it's about a matter that's on the agenda, or, or maybe... Well, if there was something, something related to litigation, for example... That came up just that afternoon. Yes. Yeah. Town town council arrives and says, "I really." <laughs> need to yeah. Talk or to you calls about this. and yeah. says, well, yeah. "You know, we need to talk about this. Yes. And need, I need a decision." Right. From the commission. So you you can, if it's something you didn't anticipate, you can actually have an executive session mm -hmm. kind of on the spot. In general, it will you'll know it's coming, mm -hmm. and it should be listed. You know, executive session, litigation. You know, strategy regarding Smith versus Airport Commission. Um, and uh, the, the, the chair under the, the law says that before you go into executive session, you, know, you have to vote by roll call to go in. Uh, the chair needs to state what the purpose is. And uh, the law, they stuck in this phrase, stating all subjects that may be revealed without compromising the purpose for which the executive session was called. That's kind of the, the same as what I said before about, you know, you can't just say litigation strategy, period. Mm -hmm. You need to say, you know, at least what the name of the case is or whatever it might be like that. Um, let's see. We'll call. Oh, yeah, you also still need to state whether you're going to come out of executive session or whether you're going to adjourn the meeting mm -hmm. at the end, just so people in the audience know whether to, to stick around or not. Um, it's important that... Uh, if you say you're going in under, you know, purpose, purpose three, litigation strategy, once you're in there, you don't want to start talking about a piece of property you're looking at, even though that's a different so this proper is, I purpose. I don't know if you have in front of you our agenda for the executive session. But based on what you're saying, uh, except for the minutes one, 
basically they're not adequate. But excuse me, you we do say all this in our regular agenda. Dan right. usually reads all oh, that. Yeah, or that's true. But so. there's a separate agenda right. that's been published for right. the. Yeah. Um, it's not published. No, it's not no, that's, part, that's just oh, for okay. us, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that looks sick. Traditionally, this on our, on our thing at the bottom, you see, yes. we read all the book why we're going into executive session. Yeah. That is all read. Out. And it should be read out loud? The purpose for going in? Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, that, that, yes. Yeah, okay. That would be best, yes. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, I, I saw the very short notice you were right. saying. That, that would not... That would, not so that would not qualify for the published notice, you know, the one filed with the town clerk, but the one you have here, uh, no, certainly does. Uh, so you do need to watch for that. You know, if you need to declare what purpose or even more than one purpose that you're going in for and confine your discussion to that purpose. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I've, I've cited a few examples where the attorney general found that a board kind of strayed or they, they – Said they were going in for to do one thing, but really they didn't. It was it was a different one. Uh, how they do not find that to be a mere technical violation. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, you can go to the next one. Uh, I'm not going to go through all ten purposes certainly, but there are some that come up more often than others. Uh, number one, to discuss the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than professional competence of an individual or to hear complaints or charges against a, a public employee or, or official. So this one has sort of labor connotations to it, personnel connotations. And uh, for this one, uh, this is the only one, you have to send uh, written notice to the person who you're going to be talking about. And this business about excluding professional competence, it's if you're, uh, you're going to be performing, doing a performance evaluation, annual evaluation of, of one of your employees, uh, that's not supposed to happen in executive session. Uh, in general, that's supposed to happen in an open session if you want to do it as a group. Um, well, our Board of Selectmen, for example, did an evaluation of the town manager, and they polled the members of the, I guess they gave them a, a a chart, and mm -hmm. they polled them. I don't know that they released those or not. I don't know whether they did or not. But it seems to me that that should all take place in open session, should it not, on the basis of what you just said? By a... Uh, they said they polled each one on mm -hmm. several characteristics and how got a ranking. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, well, without getting too far into it, what, what I've seen some boards do is um, they might have each member kind of write out an evaluation, and then the chair, for example, will put together sort of a composite. You know, you got a four on this and a three on that. So you can do it that way. You can you, have each you, person fill out a, a rating form, if you will, mm -hmm. and then compile them and average them. And, and does, the, does the public have to know who did what each member of the group did? I would say no. I mean, if, if those individual ones are also discussed at the meeting, any, pretty much any document you discuss at an open meeting becomes an open, open uh, record. And so the, those composites very often are used because then if people want to look at it, okay. you know, they can. Right. And also if you're discussing somebody, uh, an individual, they can request that it's an open meeting if they that, want. Correct? That's correct. Yeah, they they need to get written notice. They can be told. They have to be told. They can bring in a uh, their attorney if they want. They can make a recording of the executive mm -hmm. session if they want. Mm -hmm. um, they can also have an open meeting if they. They can want. also insist that it be done in open. Yes, Thank that's you. correct. Um, oh, I, I just wanted to add there that this is the one. Uh, this is the, the one exception where the attorney general has said, you know, we understand privacy considerations. You know, you want to talk about a complaint you received. It's not quite fair to say we're going to go in and talk about a complaint we received about Joe Smith, you know, our, our superintendent. Um, so there you don't have to declare. The, you can leave out that kind of detail on this. You know, it's kind of good public policy right, can reasons we go to for the that. Litigation? Yes, Please. we can certainly do that. Um, and um, it's, uh, has two, three, and six. This is on page my page twelve Couple exemption. I don't see a number. Yeah, three, three. First slide. 
Yeah, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. Right. Mm -hmm. And then down uh, on your a slide, which says exemptions continued, it starts out to justify an executive session to discuss litigation. The AG has stated that the mere possibility of litigation is not sufficient. Mere possibility. Litigation must be pending or clearly and imminently threatened or otherwise demonstrably likely. What does that mean, <laughs> please? Well, and, that's, and, not a, that's not a bright line test, I should say. But they, um, you know, what, what, they, what they have said, you know, uh, you can't do. Let's say you're a permit granting authority. Well, you know, every time you make a decision on a permit, yes or no, somebody could appeal it. Um, and so they say, you know, that's, that's not enough, certainly, to go in and talk litigation strategy. If, if, um, what about the possibility of suing for monetary damages? Well, again, the... Uh, which is mm -hmm. demonstrably likely. <laughs> I think the, what you have to be careful of, though, is, let's say, I mean, I'll give you an example that I think would justify executive session. Um, you know, you've, the person come in, they've got a lawyer, he says, you know, I've got this complaint, all, I'm going to file it tomorrow morning if you, you know, deny what we're asking for. Um, you know, that's pretty demonstrably likely. Um, but, uh, you know, you would have to be careful. If you go into executive session then, you know, you, you still need to be aware that it's litigation strategy. So you can't go in you know, debate and, and make your decision on the on the permit. Let's call it a permit. Um, you, you still would have to go in and say, you know. But well, it, it's it's this one's kind of tough. I, I admit. I admit. Uh, obviously, once there is litigation, you know, they file the complaint. Then you can go in as many times as you want to talk about strategy. You can't invite the other side in because then you're not talking about strategy. But. Right. Mm-hmm. We're going to have another discussion privately. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, this one is, that one is, is tough because, you know. All right, let me, let me, like let me put it mean? this way, if mm -hmm. I may. If you were discussing, if you want to discuss taking various actions, uh, a menu, you have a menu of actions to discuss, and you want to discuss them in the context of potential liability. And you're reasonably certain that if you take four out of the five, there's going to be litigation. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's uh, I, I'm not going to be able to give a good black and white answer, I don't think. Um, but I, I think if you can make the case that, you know, we've got this topic, if we have to make a decision on it, and, you know, we've already heard from, you know, four neighbors that they're going to sue us if, if we vote X or Y. I mean, I, you can probably make a case there that it's imminently threatened. But they, it's, they don't want to just hear, you know, that one person said, well, you know, I'd probably appeal that if you turned it down because mm -hmm. I don't think you have a good reason, uh, you know. So well, that, yeah, yeah I mean, of appeal, a, of a, of a appeal of a scale. decision is one thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but an action which could result in liability to the c c town yeah. is something else. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, I guess what you'd have to b be careful for if you went in under this purpose in that situation before any litigation mm -hmm. is filed is if you, if there was a complaint filed and you need to justify to the AG that, well, we, we really weren't, you know, we weren't in there just debating the merits of this Mm -hmm. you know, event, we were talking about litigation strategy. You know, if, if these people follow through with the lawsuit, you know, we might be exposed here or there. Is there something, mm -hmm. you know, is there something we can do to, you know, try to minimize mm -hmm. that? If I think if you can make a case that it was li litigation strategy related, um, then the AG, I think, would go along with that. Okay. But these, these are the words they've come up with, imminently threatened or demonstrably likely. Okay. All Thank right. you. Um, let's see. I had a question on number six, if I could, yep. which is, has yeah. to do with um, the purchase exchange lease or value of real property. Yep. Does the property that we're considering specifically need to be listed on an agenda? And could you make the case, if I may, that 
it, it would have a detrimental impact on our position if we're nego- you know we don't okay. particularly want it to I be. See. I think it would depend on right. the type of transaction, would it not? I would think yeah. so, but that's my if, question. If yeah, exactly. That's why the, this one, well, the litigation one also says the chair should declare that we're doing an executive session because it will otherwise be detrimental effects, you know, to the town. Same with the, with the real property. For example, you may, um, you may have some parcel that, you know, you think would be a great addition. Acquisition, for, yeah. You're right. Um, but maybe you don't want to talk about it. In an open session, because you haven't even talked to the owner, you know, you, yep. you'll you might double the price if they <laughs> get that idea, that kind of thing. You know, that that's legitimate. It may be detrimental to the town's position. So then you could, um, then I would say, right, don't don't list the property. Mm-hmm. Um, now once once kind of a it's you know, an offer has been made or yeah. along those lines, you may still want to talk about it, ideally in executive session, but then. The um, uh, the attorney general would say, well, you, it's not going to be detrimental to your position anymore if you say, you know, for Oak Street, because it's I, re- I already knows that. Mm-hmm. So you might still be able to use executive session, but they want you to, you know, to you know, continuing discussion on uh, purchasing for Oak Street or something like that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Okay, I don't think we need to do that one. We do the minutes. We do all that stuff. We did that one. Yeah, I think we've hit some of the minutes. Yeah. Um, I, I did want to, just for, for, <laughs> for your and Andrea's benefit, I know what, one of the reasons, and we kind of hit on this subject already, um, that uh, if the, the two of you together, does that mean you literally can't talk about anything that has to do with the airport commission? Well, no, it doesn't, because you're two out of five, so it's not a quorum. So even if you were to talk about some issue that's going to be on the meeting next week, um, that's not a violation. Um, What's, you know, just what you need to watch for is then one of you talks to a third member, says, well, we were talking about this, and da-da-da-da, and all of a sudden you've kind of got three members on the same page. At least arguably that's a violation because... You know, as I said, it's so easy to happen accidentally, even with email. But it used to be the, the district attorneys used to warn about serial telephone conversations. You know, the chairman calls member A, then member B, and says, "Well, you know, A is on board with this. What do you think?" And then, before you know it, there's been this discussion, even though nobody was in the same room. So it, it's kind of the, the same way. My, sort of my worst, and this is the, the scenario that I discussed with, with John. And please, this is not personal. I'm just trying to make sure we all keep ourselves uh, out of trouble. Is that somebody from the commission calls one of the planners and talks to either one of them. And then two days later, the other one says to a third party, well, Dan Drake or Arcus Barrow called my other half and said... So it's clear at that point that it's been a three-party discussion, even a serial discussion. Mm-hmm. Is that a is that a concern? Should that be a concern? Well, I mean, I guess it should be a concern. I mean, it's something you should watch for, um, because just just like you know, two people could email back and forth, you know, extensively. Mm-hmm. That's not a violation because it's not a quorum involved. But as soon as one of them forwards it to a third member, and they they can read, you know, they can read everything that's been talked about, that I think the attorney general would say, well, as far as in the email context, I think that's a violation because you had an exchange of opinions among a quorum of the board. So if I understand correctly, the statute that requires us to meet open meeting law is no different for Andrea and I than it is for Arthur and Jeanette, or Dan and Andrea. Absolutely. So that the fact that we talk about it or not should indicate that we should never bring a third party in. I don't see that as being different than any of the other members of the commission. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But I I guess where I'm coming from, and again, speaking in the abstract, 
Mm -hmm. Can I safely assume that we're, we're there is a couple, married couple on the on the commission that if I talk to one, they're not going to talk to the other. Well, the, the probably the best conservative advice would be not to not to have the same conversation that the one had with you, you know, substantively. You know what I mean? So then you've had three people kind of engaged in the same thing. So whether it would be oh sorry no that's okay. I was just going to say whether whether that example would be a violation or not. You know, where where the three people really exchange this. All the, everybody knows what the other two's opinions are. Well, I, uh, I wouldn't. Maybe not. I wouldn't necessarily. I, right. What I asked you was, can I assume if I'm going to talk to Andrea that she's not going to talk to Neil? Just as a matter of the same way, I would be able to assume that if I talked to Jeanette, she wasn't going to talk to Arthur. I would offer for me that that assumption of integrity on whether or not I will share what you're telling to another board member is no different than it would be for any other member. So if I have something that you tell me about, I'm not going to repeat it to Andrea because I am smart enough, I didn't say I was smart, I said I'm smart enough to understand that is a violation of the open meeting law. And I think that would hold true if uh, Ms. Topham told me something or Mr. Gasparo told me something. So for me, the answer to your question is yes. But if I might turn that around, and I appreciate that, but if I might turn that around, if somebody goes to and complains to the Attorney General and says there was a violation, some third party, mm -hmm. says there was a violation of the open meeting law because Mr. Drake talked to Mrs. Planzer, mm -hmm. uh, that by definition because they're a couple and they're, you know, other protections for couples, that by definition is a violation. And I would argue that it isn't. Well, no, I, 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 I'm just saying it's perception is the issue here, really. When you get well, yeah, it, except if the Attorney General is going to look at that, they're not going to assume that, you know, well, that's, this is really my Commission question. Member B yeah. talks to Commission Member C. Yeah. You know, they may ask. They say, well, you know, we got this complaint. The complaint said it looked like the commission kind of had its mind made up when they arrived. Um, you know, we think there was a violate. We think there was talking outside the meeting. And so, I, I mean, I think you're right. It doesn't. That's fine. It doesn't really matter what the is relationship is. Session. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, if uh, the attorney general might, uh, and we, we, you know, we get calls, we participate in calls with this office. Sometimes they'll say, they'll say, you know, well, we just want to talk to these two members and say, you know, did you have a conversation with your fellow board member, you know, outside of a meeting? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, then the answer is no, you know. Um, it's it, to, to go to the extreme is, uh, you know, when the five of you come up to a meeting and there's something on your agenda and, and you look around and say, well, we're ready for a vote, right? You know, because then, then it certainly looks as though there's been, you know, extra, extra meeting, uh, you know, conversations. And that's what obviously is what this is designed to avoid. And I was surprised when you said that two of us could email each other. I mean, I always have felt that I shouldn't discuss anything, either email or conversation, until we're at the meeting. It's uh, well, that's. And then, like taking it to the extreme, probably. Yeah, I mean, that's. I'm, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you to stop doing that. <laughs> no, I don't but, want to get uh, caught for doing something I'm not supposed but to do. But by the definition, this, the Attorney General says is by the definition of deliberation, it's not. You know, deliberation is only supposed to happen in a open meeting uh, or a posted meeting. Um, as long as there hasn't been deliberation among a quorum outside of a meeting, it's not a violation. Now, with the, you know, as I say, the danger with email is you go back and forth with one and, and then it gets forwarded to a third one, and, you know, that's the problem. Yeah. And I have another question. We, okay. When your first, your um, law firm came, we had to have an open meeting law session and also uh, conflict of interest. Are we going to have that again, or will this, for us, will this take care of the open, open meeting law? Well, I, I'm pretty much just doing the open meeting law tonight. Right. Um, 
We, we can certainly do that. We can we can do it for you know a bunch of boards together. Yeah, I would think if we well, were going to uh, do that. I mean, I, we had this specifically because of the situation. I guess what I'm yeah. trying to do is not have to come to another meeting for open meetings. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this will. Check uh, my box. <laughs> I'm being selfish. Yeah. No, hopefully this will. Very good. This should last you. This one, That's I mean, right, I, I, I will say that uh, that this doesn't. This law doesn't have the same requirement that they've stuck into the conflict law where they want everybody every two years. Okay. To, All right. know, That's there isn't the anything like that. Sure right. And um, we can do that online now. I'm re I've done it the, the conflict? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, actually, you're Thank supposed you. to. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, I guess if you, maybe I'll just ask you, just because I know we're running a little late, uh, if there's anything in particular with minutes. No, um, the, the enforcement, you know, it just very briefly, if, if somebody has a complaint, they have to come file it with you. And you look at it and you decide what the response is going to be. So you might use our office to help kind of draft the legal language. But, um, uh, and so you, you give a response. It gets copied to the Attorney General and to the person who filed the complaint. And only if they decide they're not satisfied. Uh, then they go to the AG's office, and that office gets involved, and they may ask for copies of minutes or notices. They might make a, you know, a few calls and decide whether they think there's been a violation or not. And 99% of the time, there are things have said, even if they say, yes, you violated the law when you did this and that, um, you know, be sure you're aware of this. You know, maybe have a little training. You know, either you know, we, we'll do a regional training or your town council can do it for you. Uh, you know, just be aware of all the re all the requirements of this law because you know you're you're subject to all of them. Um, that's in general what's going to happen if it gets to that point. All right. Well, thank you very much. Mm, Any okay. other questions or comments okay. for? Well, Ms. Say, if we if we slipped up and sent an email and it. Oh yeah. Th thanks. What would sh what should we do? Uh, I would say sure. there's actually some examples in these written decisions that the AG has said, you know, oh, you know, you've you've taken care of it. Let's let's say that happens. You realize, oh, three or four of us are in on this email and we're exchanging opinions, and it, you know, really didn't mean it. Um, uh, what what they say is, you know, you if it's a, if it's a violation, but if you can cure it, then we'll consider that you've done everything, you know, we want you to do. So in that case. I would say, you know, at, at, a next, at your next meeting, say, you know, we're, we're going to talk about this subject tonight. Um, some of the members were emailing back and forth, and we, you know, inadvertently got a, a quorum involved. Um, you know, no decisions were made, but uh, we're going to have, you know, we're going to have this whole discussion tonight in front of you, mm -hmm. and it was on our agenda, and we're even going to uh, attach the emails to our minutes. That's kind of one thing. And so... In that case, the Attorney General said, well, we agree, that was a violation, but you've done everything we think you should have done, and so, you know, as far as we're concerned, it's a closed, closed case. Okay. Okay? So it's that kind of thing, kind of proactive, you know, oops. Or, or you know, say you, you didn't get your meeting posted. Uh, you know, that makes it a illegal meeting, mm -hmm. quote, unquote. But if you uh, say, okay, well, you know, well, let's carry those agenda items over till next week and make sure it gets posted and we'll... You know, we'll at least summarize, you know, what we talked about tonight. Uh, same kind of thing. Attorney General would say, yes, it was a violation, but you've taken care of it. All right. Well, thank okay. you very much, All right. Mr. Well, my Riley. Pleasure. Let's take a five-minute break. And somebody may want a bathroom break. I'm going to walk out. Uh, David, is David taking Mr. Riley back um, to the airport? Do a little David speech? or sure. Noah? I think it probably should be David. Um, are we David, because the other's next. Oh, yeah. Dave, can you run? Can you bring him back? Thanks. Do we have um, other counsel for executive session on the phone, or no. can we do an executive session with other counsel? We are, yes. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now. We were in school. Late dinner tonight, Bobby.
Say again. Your friend Andrew was having all the fun with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, although I got to see you on uh, when Bobby watches all the meetings, I yeah. got to see you at the uh, the Sanctity. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of all the projects. I was doing that too. Thank you. I wish you good luck, Steve. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. I think she's pretty special. Yeah. What's that? Oh no. I wouldn't want to. I didn't get a chance to look at that. I think we'll probably push that out two more weeks. I'm guessing. I'm not going to build it till the fall. At this point. Yeah, I wouldn't go with But I'm, you know, I, I sent something to Stan and said, you know, I'm pretty close. I mean, I could probably get it in on Friday, but why not give it two more weeks? And, but I mean, I've got a lot of it figured out. I've met out there with, you know, like I'm trying to keep you guys, everybody in the loop, you know, that I've made meeting out there with the AGM. And that was, that was huge. And, um, I've had discussions with Lee and Stan both, and so most of the stuff is kind of pulled together. I just don't want to waste any of the legal time until, like, uh -huh. I want you to redline it, you know, which I think Lee's is ready because I had already redlined it. You know, we, we had already had a back and forth. And most of it's so technical anyway. I, I don't think there's much from a legal end. <laughs> it's up to you. Maybe for the final, if you had any comment, it wouldn't hurt, but I don't know that, you know, it, it'll, you know. Like paint dry, and I mean, there's, there's nothing really in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, science type stuff is not a regulatory analysis. You know, and I think we're going to have double up between Lee and Stan anyway. And we'll have my thing anymore. Duplication. <laughs> um, no, we did. Yeah, because you had all of the stuff I had done on those other projects. Yes. And, and Stan was already um, worked for our clients, so I didn't want to, you know what I mean? Now, it's a little duplicative, I know it's a little less expensive, I'm sure, but if it helps us build the record for what we need, then, you know, so. Oh. Okay. Oh, no, it wouldn't be filed for that one anyway. It would be filed this Friday for May, um, 13th or whatever that next one is. So, but it won't Seems be the like 30th. Air 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 comes out yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the 30th meeting is going to be. Even in the summer, I don't want it. I think Great. so. I, I have several. Well, uh, I, All right. Can we uh -huh. begin again? Yeah. Uh -huh. Everybody's here. Is, uh, is Jeff coming back? <laughs> oh. Okay. Let's, we'll, we'll wait because I said 6 30. That's a couple minutes. You can take a break. <laughs> Why did we? Because the gentleman was leaving. Nature. And, and, and nature and <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you. Um, the next topic is the formerly used defense site status. Uh, discussion of report from Weston Solutions is the first part of that, and the second part of it is consideration of revocation of Bunker Road procurement on parcels not subject to existing leases. Mr. Rafter, would you like to handle this, please? Yes. Um, we received a report from Weston Solutions late last week. We're in the process of reviewing it. Um, we've discussed with, we, we had a discussion with council as well as the licensed site professional, Weston, to try to determine and develop a plan moving forward um, and there may be a minimum of one reportable uh, contaminant in there in the soil that we would have to report to DEP. So we're, we're working out a plan for that, but just some late breaking news. Um, well, I, I think you want to mention, before you get to the late breaking news, do you want to mention the uh, uh, UXO situation? 
in terms of the report from Weston? Well, again, it was just on the pile that was mm -hmm. relocated to the airport. Right. They did not uh, – they didn't uncover any UXO, but uh, going forward, if we were to do anything with that pile, as I understand it, we would have to clear it, if you will, and there's different mechanisms on how to do that. Mm -hmm. So they, they didn't uh, uncover any during their sampling for the uh, soils, any UXO. And there were just some low contaminant potential in certain areas, so that's what we're trying to refine a little bit. Um, but the, the late news is that after long discussions and uh, topic on this, we got an email today from the Army Corps of Engineers indicating that their attempt to move this project forward was successful and that uh, the next phase for the Army Corps of Engineers, they're hoping to have a, uh, someone under contract by the end of September to do, and I'm going to look to Noah to correct me if I'm wrong in my terminology, uh, the next phase, which I believe is uh, further investigation. It's not remediation, but further investigation, and then once that's complete, it would move into the remediation process. So they, they apparently have received the funding, and their intent is to try to get a consultant on board uh, by the end of September. So that's the, the latest on FUDs. That was good news as far as we were concerned. And if you recall, we were scheduled to be in the uh, 2035 time frame. So it moved up quite a bit. So um, that deals with the pile of dirt that was removed from one of the existing tenants' property and is in a corner of the airport, correct? It deals with the, and only the FUD that site. With the dirt that was removed from the FUD site? No, the, no. Oh, I'm sorry. The Army, the Army Corps, Corps funding Army Corps. deals sorry. with the FUD site. Correct. The Weston, the Weston report the, deals strictly with what we own on the airport, basically. But came from the FUD site. Correct. Um, and the point that I'm trying to make is that this is all very confusing at this juncture. Not in that uh, we have to extrapolate what the report from Weston means for the FUD site, but now we also have to factor in the – uh, consideration of of the Army Corps stepping forward and saying they're going to do this, uh, right. starting the process hopefully by the end of September, which is the end of the uh, government's fiscal year, and, and we don't know how much money they've got or what they intend to do at this point. So, what I was I was a participant in the meeting with uh, the people from Weston this morning. And with town, somebody from town council's office, and um, with uh, Mr. Rafter and Mr. Carberg, and what we agreed was to ask town council, based on what he'd heard then, and now we'll we'll put the Army Corps of Engineers uh, additional additional uh, volunteer <laughs> information uh, into the factor it in and come up with a, a outline of recommendations for us of how to deal with both the existing tenants and the tenants where leases have not been signed. So we have asked um, him to do this. He has agreed to do it. And we will have that or some refined version of that for discussion at the next meeting. Uh, it seemed uh, inappropriate to... Uh, discuss taking, I mean, we're happy to discuss it, but uh, to actually discuss taking any action with respect to anybody uh, tonight because uh, we really don't at this point understand all the implications. So as, as the new member needing some education, let me mm. just ask a couple of questions because I see three separate issues. You have the pile that was taken from someone else's excavation from the flood site. That's what Weston looked at. Correct. They found no ferrous metals, unexploded ordnance indicated by the ferrous metals. They found three elements that were uh, reportable, two of which are going to be changed, and we should hold off doing that. We, and the arsenic. We believe level, they're going to be changed. We can't be certain at this point. Right, but, but they that. think by the time the 120-day notification mm -hmm. process is up, uh, we don't have we, we don't have to do it. 
there is one level uh, that uh, is is reportable for the arsenic. Now, I didn't couldn't tell the level. It's reportable, period. But it didn't indicate to me in a way I could understand on how much, what the level is. Is it it's, slightly above? Is yeah. it a lot above? And what that would mean. So I'll that, take, okay, I'm not looking yeah. for answers. Let me okay. just see if I can clarify the three you're issues. You're right so far. That's, yeah. So that's one issue. There is a second issue that you just brought up that said, we now have heard from the Army Corps of Engineers. Understand, I don't know the background other than what I read the last few days mm -hmm. trying to catch up. The Corps of Engineers has said that we will start the next process, and we have the funding, whatever that is, they indicated to you, they had the funding. I haven't seen that email, but let's assume that's what they said. Am I wrong? Is that what they said? They had the funding? They, they didn't mention funding, just that they received approval for the project, so they indicating a, that would be funding, yes. Approval for the process. The next, for, the, uh, for, project. Their, for their project, which is a process. The first element of the process on the entire FUD site is further investigation to determine how what level of effort will be to clear it? I believe this is the second effort. There was already an original one that, de that determined that it was a FUD site. So, okay. so there was a report generated. This is the next step, which I believe is called um, remedial investigation. Yes. So it's determining how big is the bread box. Yes. Do, is it $50,000 to clarify it? Is it $50 million? And it depends on what they find. Exaggeration for point. So those two things are spinning, and we need to pay attention to them. Uh, the, the third element, which is separate from those two, although connected by uh, need, is the leases around the sites. So what I heard you say, Mr. Chairman, is that you went to get a briefing on the Weston site. Were you aware of the... Did they discuss the Army Corps of Engineers at that meeting? The Army Corps of Engineers was most definitely discussed at that meeting. What we did was ask Weston to essentially extrapolate from what they uh, took away from the site, from the dirt pile that they analyzed, and how, what it implications might be for the flood site itself. And they were obviously hesitant to be very specific without having tested. But part of what council may recommend is that, at least before the Army Corps entered the pot, entered the equation, part of what uh, council was considering is whether to request some sort of test of the, of the FUD sites themselves. The, the parcels on the FUD sites, both potentially for contaminants and for ferrous metals. If Isn't I may, what the Army Corps of Engineers will do? just for your background, Commissioner, too, we had previously had a conference call with the Army Corps and DEP about the FUD site, and that's where the determination was made at their recommendation to proceed with testing the pile that's on the airport. They, their recommendation, their approach was, Test that, find out what you have, and then we'll get back together and look at how we move forward. Um, let me just, because I think perhaps a slightly inaccurate characterization of the Army Corps' email was uh, given before, and this will, we'll get, get this in the record, but uh, just so you're clear, everybody's clear, this is from Heather Sullivan, uh, and uh, I don't know who is. is she one of the people that, that was in on your earlier conversations? Yes. It says good, it's addressed to, uh, to Mr. Carberg and to uh, Tom Rafter, among, I guess, other people at the, at the Army Corps. It says, good morning. I wanted to give you all a quick update on the Nantucket Airport FUDS project. As promised, we requested that our headquarters approve and fund the Nantucket Airport remedial investigation. We were informed last week that the project request was approved. So that's funding okay, I didn't, as no, well as. No. We are now working to get the contract awarded prior to the end of our fiscal year, September 30th. Carol will be setting up a conference call in the near future to discuss the path forward. Uh, signed, Heather. Classification unclassified, caveats none. Any 
the other groups? Yeah. So just so I, I get it uh, in my head. So at the meeting, town council is going to do what that we're going to see at the next? We're he, town meeting. council is going to come up with a, some preliminary recommendations of, of, a cor, of a course of action for us, for the commission. In, oh, in terms of... I'm oh, sorry. Leases, the leases. Both the existing and the potential leases. And they may be the same or they may be different. Um, and, you know, I suspect we will, Tom and Noah and I will do a little refining of that before it comes to the commission. But obviously, we'll give you the, we'll give you this, the trail so you see everything that's there. And, and there may, may, some of it may be, uh, you know, council may want to keep confidential. I don't know. Uh, so I can't. I'll have to figure that out. So that is the story. So the three issues. The first one is the file, which is going to be left alone for now, correct? We're not moving it. We're not moving it. How we approach that is still... Undetermined display. And be, that determined. Might be determined. Whether it be tarp or clean. Under, under uh, the Corps of Engineers, because this part of the FUD site. No. Not uh, likely. Not likely, yeah. According to our prior conference call, the fact that we moved it, we accepted that. That's ours now. And that's okay. where and we we're, we're trying to mitigate, you know, we're trying to mitigate our, our risk on the rest of the site. And. So what, what we're asking Weston to, in, to uh, interpolate from the pile to the flood site? We, did, we asked them hypothetically to, or, uh, to say what are the implications in terms of the flood site and what would they consider doing. And, and that will be part of what council presents to us. Okay. So just, uh, uh, just I guess I'm confused because... If the Corps of Engineers are going to do that, well, why do we have we, West and That was the course of action that we determined prior to getting the email. Ah. So we, we had this. We developed this course of action. We subsequently got the email later in the day. And now the council is going to have to look at. Revisiting that. Yes, okay. how we approach it. And but, given that. Yeah, because the interpolation, would, when I read this, was pretty straightforward. You're going to have arsenic and you're going to have two other um, notifiable metals in there. But I don't know how you can interpret no ferrous. You can't. Well, that's that's the rest. that's part of the point. They can't you can't, and they right. made that very clear. And the Corps of Engineers will do that for the FUD site. Yes, for the FUD site. Right. We may be required to do it if we want to for our pile, or we may tarp mm -hmm. it and leave it there sure. for mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. You may what with it and leave it? Put a tarp on it. Oh, they okay. did recommend the LSP, our licensed site professional, did recommend, and we'll do this put some temporary fencing around it with some signs not to disturb or anything else. So. Okay. Okay. So that's, that helps me a lot. Mm -hmm. I understand that. And the third one is what the, so reference the FUD site and the Weston pile that's been looked at. Those two elements will go to town council now that we've got the uh, information from the Corps of Engineers and they will give us a number of recommendations on how to pursue with leases to be granted and leases already. They will give us recommendations. I'm not going to say number, number of recommendations. They will give us recommendations. I don't know whether it will be one. Okay. It could be one. It could be five. It could be a recommendation. It or could be a recommendation. Right. It could be okay. both. I got it. Thank you. Anything else? Any questions? Mm -mm. Mr. Smith or Mr. Cohen, do you? You know, I don't want to debate this now, but I just want to make sure you understand what's going on. Would you speak to the microphone, please? I guess this one. Just very briefly, Mr. Would Drake, Stephen Cohen, uh, for uh, Mr. Smith, who's one of the uh, un unleased award uh, bid award winners. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I understand the issues that you're dealing with, that they're complicated legal issues and safety issues and federal and state uh, and environmental issues. And what, what we'd like to do is just make sure that the commission understands that Mr. Smith is willing to wait and make sure that the uh, I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and that the process is done in the appropriate way and would like the 
um, uh, when the options that are, are going to be explored or developed, that that would include some opportunity to continue the negotiation of his lease with appropriate terms and timelines to deal with this issue, that, um, that the uh, lease not be uh, abandoned or jettisoned um, just, just because there's other work that needs to be done. He's willing to uh, cooperate, and, and if that um, means waiting, then it means waiting, and if we can come up with some other plans to speed that up and, and there's no interference with, with uh, federal or state or airport issues, then, then we could explore those once, we're, once we get yeah, to the point well, to, to Let's look at see those. where we are after the, after the, at the next meeting. And, yeah. and certainly, uh, you know, town council has, I mean, the reason this is on the agenda uh, is because town council advised that it was an appropriate action to take. Um, and um, so uh, I think you need to know that. That's, that's part of the equation. And um, the, uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. And I'm delighted that Mr. Smith is willing to be patient. Uh, I think it's a question of, uh, of um, you know, as, as I mentioned in an email, which I'm sure you've seen that I sent to him. Yeah. You know, we have to ultimately consider what's best for the the, the town and the people of the town. Right. And uh, absolutely. I, I guess what I would say is that Mr. Smith is willing to both be cooperative and creative in making sure that the appropriate steps are taken and to the extent that there's any way to save some time and save the airport money, uh, he's willing to discuss those. But, but at the moment, I don't know that we're at, the, uh, at that point yet. Um, but I suspect in the next few months we'll, we'll be there. Thank you very much, Thanks. Mr. Cohen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thanks. Smith. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> okay. Move on to pending leases, okay? Yep. Um, I'm requesting another month extension for the uh, World Fuel contract. We are in the process. We've negotiated. We got feedback from World Fuel on four agreements, I believe it is. Um, we're looking at two other potential agreements as well. The boilerplate uh, is being put together, so it's going through our review internally from town and ourselves, and um, we're hoping to have that wrapped up shortly, but otherwise it's going to expire at the end of this month, so we're looking for another 30-day extension. Um, and again, I would anticipate that the first order of business would be three agreements, the truck leases, the provision of fuel, and a branded uh, dealership for Phillips 66. The other potential uh, agreements, and they're, they're still open, we're not sure we're going to proceed with them. One is called Air Elite. It's uh, We've been invited to become a member of the Air Elite uh, group of FBOs, which have a very high uh, level of standards that we meet, and they would like us to join that. There are some uh, significant and decent benefits to being that uh, in that membership, financial and marketing and some other uh, aspects. The other agreement that we're contemplating, but we're not quite convinced that it's worth uh, our engaging in, is a contract fuel agreement essentially for uh, corporate type aircraft called the Alliance Program under World Fuels. And we're supposed to uh, be trying to arrange a conference call to get additional information on that, but I, I don't honestly see the uh, financial or significant benefit at this point in time just yet to the airport. So th that's probably, if we do go forward with it, will be the last agreement that I bring to the Commission, but the first three and then possibly Air Elite shortly thereafter. And they said that the Air Elite would come give a presentation of the benefits? <laughs> yes, but part of, part of this uh, catch-22 here, the Air Elite draft agreement did not have a number of the attachments. And World Fuel said that the only thing they could, they could surmise was that we were requested to sign a non-disclosure agreement first before they would provide us with that information. So we've sent the, the uh, non-disclosure agreement on to legal to see if we're permitted to sign a non-disclosure agreement as a public entity. 
So, um, <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a catch-22 here. And presumably uh, signing the non-disclosure agreement would be subject to the vote of a the commission, too. But right. Yeah, so we have to get through that hurdle mm -hmm. first, then they'll release it, and then we can determine whether or not mm -hmm. the air elite is truly what, you know, it's saying it is. So. But that won't hold up the other side. No, the three Both primary three. ones that we need are to sell the fuel, to get the trucks, and a branded uh, concept. So. so are the agreements then with our council, or are they still being they are revised or...? Here oh. and going to town, sir. Going to town. Yeah. Going <laughs> to Mr. Gaspar, do you have a question? No, I was just going to make a motion to extend the um, world fuel contract to 4 30 14. Uh, 5 31, it? shouldn't it be? I was going to say that that's oh. only gives us right. how many days. I was just reading and not reading. It does say 4 30. I revised my motion to 5 31 14. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Gaspar, motion to do we have to ratify that at the next meeting? <laughs> um, all right. Uh, is there a second? A second, Mr. Is there further dis motion. further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. It's carried unanimously. Um, all right. Next is a lease extension for the Transportation Security Administration. Um, it's extending their office storage and parking. The amount is 47325 and we're getting back to them to just in uh, we believe there should be if it's not in the agreement we want to get a CPI in there for the amount as well they usually put the CPI in reverse right well <laughs> for reimbursement they do but this is for payment for services right. now there there was some discussion in federal legislation uh, that I don't believe passed but there was some discussion of providing free services to the federal government for, you know, this and possibly air traffic, rent-free. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a proposal in one of the bills last go-round. So. Is there a motion to approve the extension of the uh, lease with the transportation? I just have a question. Uh, well, right let's right. have a motion okay. and then we can so. have questions. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Ms. With a, with a CPI, if possible. Okay. <laughs> My question is, where is it located in, within the? They have um, some office space in the secure area, as well as I believe don't they have mm -hmm. one storage behind the, the ticket counters, or as well as you know where the uh, the bag screening mm -hmm. facility yes. back in that area, they have offices mm -hmm. and storage back there. Okay, thank you. Oh, so this is just their office, not their equipment, not that kind of stuff. It's it's their space they occupy. Space, yeah. okay. and it doesn't include the screening area. It's yeah. just the space space mm -hmm. they sort of. Because we provide that, I guess. Right. right. That's required. <laughs> <laughs> and they get oh. that for free. Well, <laughs> yeah. No, okay. That's covered under another topic. Here, we'll get into it. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, the There's no change on the procurement. We're uh, still waiting for the final procedures to uh, be drafted by town, but we're continuing to work with them on those. Um, I would mention, though, that they're on the topic of procurement. Um, they're changing the process for state. Uh, state contracts, and Janine and some others on the staff are going through the process of uh, learning that, so there'll be some procedures. What's the deal there? It's essentially more of it's being done online, um, and there's some other nuances, I'm sure, that Janine could elaborate on, but um, it's just how we go about procuring things that are under well, state At contract. some point, if you think it's important, we probably should know, but let's move on tonight. Okay. Uh, master plan. On the master plan, I met with Jacobs last week to begin discussions on preliminary uh, alternative analysis, and we kicked around a number of ideas and agenda items for the next advisory committee, which I believe is scheduled for May 29th. Um, also, they sent uh, last week an updated report. As I mentioned, they're going to be sending weekly reports on all of their activities, including the master plan. We did receive today, too, and I forwarded on to the commissioners, the um, 
benchmarking for rates and charges uh, on the financial aspect of the master plan. Some good information in there, but <coughs> I need to review it a little closer. I, I had some questions on some of the items uh, with regard to the cost of cost per employment to the airlines indicated that we were low, but I don't know if that includes the other airports or including PSC. It's not a cost to the airlines. Yes. The, 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 the benchmark that you're, they're looking at up front is how much does it cost per employment for an airline to operate at Nantucket Airport? Yeah, but they're not, it's not, the PFC is not a cost to them. I don't know that, I, I yeah, agree. No, I know, I understand. But I don't know I'm if they're including that in the other. Yeah. I want to make sure we're yeah. mixing apples and apples right. here. Yeah. Um, but there is, a, it goes on to make recommendations, and going back to what we just talked about, the screening area, one of the um, recommendations was the way we charge for the hold room. Um, we have it at, I believe, at $10 a square foot, and they're recommending we convert it to a per-in-plane passenger uh, calculation. So there are some recommendations in the document that are certainly worthy of review, and I would suggest that we uh, get a subcommittee together and look at this and move forward on it. One of the other issues or questions I have is uh, with regard to parking. They simply compared us on a rate basis as opposed to total revenue per in-plane passenger for parking. So there's some, again, measurements that I want to look at, review with the consultant, and uh, then we can determine how we're going to move forward. So that's the master plan. Any questions on that? Or? All right. Manager's report. Okay. Um, the grand opening for the FBO is scheduled for May 2nd, and I would like to request permission from the commission to have a, uh, a discount program in place for just for the grand opening. I'll come back for others at another date. But at this point in time, I'd like to have a, a reduced fuel price, waive the first 24 hours for ramp fee, and waive the landing fee with a copy of a merchant's receipt from any merchant on the island, whether it be food, shopping, taxi, anything. Um, staff came up with that idea in a way that we could start calculating and just quantify some of the economic impact. So, again, just for one day only, um, and did I... I see You're talking second. about roughly a 40% reduction in the margin on the fuel, right? Essentially, yes. And again, it's one day only when, in fact, you know, the, we're looking at, did I, is May 2nd Saturday? Right. It's the 3rd, I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize. It's the 3rd. It's the Saturday. Oh, it's the Saturday. That's oh, what it's I was Saturday. Oh, okay. I put which it is, in my which is a slower day than Friday. Friday so. May 3rd? Yes. Um, I guess based on what we heard, we will not post that as a meeting. And we will not, not deliberate. deliberate. <laughs> <laughs> nor, will we, nor, will, nor will we be deliberate. <laughs> so if, if I, I don't know if you need a vote on that or how that would work, but like, because it is a change. For I the think day we do rates. need a vote on the, um, on the, where the fuel disc, I think we do need a vote on all three. So I believe it's appropriate, I would entertain a motion to, Approve the manager's recommendation that on May 3rd, 2014, A, the uh, margin on fuel be reduced by approximately 40 percent. B, um, what was it, waive the parking? Waive the first 24 hour uh, ramp fee parking. Ramp, ramp fee. And uh, re in essence, rebate the landing fee if they present a merchant uh, receipt from a local merchant. Correct. Would that include any kind of? Uh, well, first of all, is there is there a motion? Is there a motion to that effect? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Um, question. Just, well, let me just. Yeah. Um, uh, my question on the on the. Um, Rebate of the landing fee would that be any merchant? Any merchant at all well, that I mean, was on the it, island. If somebody for, I mean, stated for that date, uh, <laughs> should we set a minimum? Um, yeah, I think it's that's probably a good idea. If they go on the newsstand and buy a newspaper. That yeah. really doesn't count. That that was kicked around, and yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Mr. Planzer. 
Yeah, so first, my first question is, does the commission set the price of the fuel? They approve it, yes. So I, I recommend not, not, uh, overall on our rates, well. We, rec we basically, I mean, there's an issue because the margin is obviously competitive information. We, we have to check on that, but I think we probably have well, to. Uh, we, yeah, well, we don't have to talk about the number. But, you know, my only point is if we don't... Uh, we have approved the, appro the pricing approach for fuel. Right. We approve the pricing approach, but we don't, we don't set the price. That's correct. So okay. my thinking is, then, should we be setting the discount on it, or is that in the purview of the airport manager to do? And the other, only other thing I would ask is... Um, Sometimes. Excuse me. Let me respond to the first one. Okay. If I, may. I believe it is because I believe it is a deviation from the pricing policy. Okay. And the second one is that my only thing about a minimum, uh, and it goes back to some experiences I've had in business, it's more of an effort to check the to minimum. check to see if they met the price than it would be. It's it's because I don't think that's what people. I don't think they're going to scam it and say I'll buy a newspaper. Or, and the know, amount of money that we're degree. talking, I think, is. Is insignificant, but but I'll leave that up to the historical feeling of the commission. I don't object to it. I'm just trying to understand. I would rather leave that decision up to management as to if there's it to be a minimum or not. Okay, that's good. Because I guess if they're going to come here, they're probably going to spend money. I mean, really? You don't usually come here. They, and they may only get a receipt for one item, though. <laughs> <laughs> this fuel <Good> count. This <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> <Well, yeah. laughs> Maybe there isn't any. I don't know. Uh, no, that, I think I, I would. I would suggest we go ahead if everybody wants to approve the the motion and, and let leave the details to. Again, this is the one day only. I will be coming back requesting an overall discount program, where it may be that we have. I ask for approval of up to five days, but at various levels, and I'll identify those and all the criteria for it. So this was kind of a. This is a we little need, bit of a test. Yeah, we want to get it. We got to get it done quickly. So, yeah. I apologize. And we're going to publicize. Or yes. Put we, out? Yep. That's why I'm, I want to get the permission so we can put it out there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I just like to mention. I think it's a great idea. So, I'll, I'll, so, yeah. so if you call for the vote, I know which way I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, <laughs> that's a vote. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. The Reels and Pappy work for runway 1533. Uh, construction has begun, and I wasn't quite sure until I turned around and looked out the window today and saw a crane at the end of the runway that <laughs> nobody noted them out because the other FAA was doing that project. Um, you said it wasn't noted? We, we, we got it noted, but nobody <laughs> notified us that it was going up. Uh, PFC, I contacted the uh, Lady at FAA Priscilla, and unfortunately she is out until April 28th, so I don't have an update on that. The security project, we had a pre-bid meeting uh, today. Those bids are due in next Wednesday, uh, and then we will submit the grant application to the FAA. On the uh, firefighting vehicle, there was an addendum needed, and we're getting some feedback from FAA. There's a new advisory circular out that only allows for the base vehicle to be bid, nothing additional, no radios, no nothing. It all has to, that has to come out as a separate package. So we're going to carve it out and put the uh, clean up the bid just for the truck, and then we're going to do the ancillary items. But we have to get a read from FA on what, which of the ancillary items are eligible for funding as well. So we have to go through and do the exercise of percentage and find out what we can fund. So uh, that may delay the grant application by a week or so, but we have been in contact with Cliff at the FAA on that. The control tower, uh, RFQ, we received uh, proposals. We're in the process of reviewing them and should have them complete shortly and get that process moving along. On the operations That's side. That's for the design, design phase. Yes. Yes. Um, under the operations side, our first group of employees are going to live burn uh, training tomorrow in New Hampshire. 
That's a requirement we have for certification. Um, last week we held the first meeting with our consultant on uh, preparation for the full-scale exercise. Very well attended, and as I told Aunt Dan earlier, when they said they were bringing the Army of people, they brought the Army. The U.S. Army showed up with about 12 people. Um, they are working on an exercise, as I previously mentioned to the Commission, over in Barnstable County, Operation Mercy Lift, I believe it's called, that will take place in June, that will have helicopters doing some timing drills to see how, how long it takes to fly out here, how long it would take to load pacing, patients, and bring them back to a staging area on the mainland. We will use the information uh, gathered from that exercise put into our full-scale exercise so we'll be able to simulate uh, patient airlift removal and that type of thing. So well, a number of good assets being worked together there. I, I believe I forwarded on to the Commission to the uh, State Trans Transportation Bond Bill for Aeronautics Division was uh, signed by the Governor last week, and that was at $89 million. So we're reaching out to the state to see what to determine what the status of our grant applications are for the equipment that we've uh, asked for. Um, also, I'm, I'm going to have to go backwards here. And I did something I should have mentioned to the Commission before, but I was asked to fill in on the radio station last Thursday for the town manager, so I spent 10 or 15 minutes just uh, updating folks on the radio what's going on at the airport. Um, additionally, last Friday, uh, Dan and I met with the state's joint committee on tourism, arts, and cultural development, including the co-chair, uh, Representative Corey Atkins, and some others. We provided a brief tour of the airport, sat down and had a discussion with them on tourism and some other items that are happening. So they had an all-day listening event in town as well as a tour and a number of other things. And just in case you hear something, we did have an incident last week where um, an individual or an unattended vehicle was found to have an, uh, a loaded gun inside of it. The police took the appropriate actions and we're working with TSA on some clarifications on that. And one other update on the staff. Um, we interviewed three candidates for Ashley's replacement and should be making an offer by the end of this week and I'll keep you posted once we do that. That's my report. Any questions? David, Mr. Sylvia, would you discuss operations and statistics? Not sure we want to go through this. <laughs> <laughs> just quickly. Yeah. It's getting yeah. late. <laughs> this, this is just last year as a reference point uh, for operations. Um, we are down March over March, 16.8, almost 17%. And year to date down 8.48. Again, we, you know, we thought we would see that with the operations. One thing to note, though, that the March operations for this year are just slightly above 2012. So maybe that's a good indicator. I don't know. But again, we're still getting hit by weather. Um, employments are up just slightly. Or no, I'm sorry. That's that was last year. Again, next one. They, They're down. Yeah. We're down uh, February over February and year to date. This is the first time year to date it's down uh, fiscal year to date. And again, weather is still taking a toll on us. It took, it did in March, and it will probably be reflected again in April because of the blizzard. So um, we're hoping though that we can make that up again. What we've seen in part of the forecasting for the master plan is that our seasonal traffic is peaking higher and expanding into the shoulder. So that's where we want to try to make it up. Jet fuel down March 7%. And year to date, though, we're still carrying it up at 3%. Again, that was last summer, uh, months carrying us through there. Some of this avgas reduction, are you on that? Avgas, <coughs> yes, is down 37 percent year to date, down 4 percent. It has to be the fact that there's been some change by island that it's equipment. switching over yeah. to a turbo yeah. aircraft. Yes, mm. and noise is down 50 percent. March over March, we had one complaint. 
and year to date down 56. What uh, what happened with freight? Was it in here somewhere? Ooh. You know what? I apologize, Dan. When we converted, we we dropped freight out of here. Well, I, I have an issue with uh, U, uh, UPS and FedEx here. Um, FedEx normally the most they've put in is like six, uh, 1,600 pounds a month. A month. They had, had 168,000 pounds that they gave me. And I'm waiting for clarification on that, which didn't it didn't make sense. Mm. Okay. Well, when you get that, would you share it with us, please? Um, okay, are there any questions? Let's see what happens the rest of the year. Um, uh, I'm sorry, and we do have daffodil uh, weekend coming up mm -hmm. this weekend, too. We had a little bit of traffic in over the weekend, even uh, today. Had a few jets in, so we're it was, it was, starting it to was, see it. It was uh, nice to see. But there was a steady stream of them coming, not a lot, but, but today, a steady yeah. stream of them today coming in. So. All right, uh, moving right along. Uh, subcommittees. We have you have in your packet a list of the subcommittees as they were previously uh, constituted. Uh, we basically made the finance piece a committee of the whole, um, and the others haven't had a lot, whole lot to do. The environmental uh, noise, environment, and energy has met a couple of times. Um, I would like this report from uh, Jacobs to be uh, on the on the rates and charges to be looked at uh, by I think the long range plans and policy committee uh, for starters and um, personnel we basically have had nothing to do for reasons we'll hear about during the executive session and um, so. Um, I guess the question is, how do we, to what extent do we want to re regroup this, uh, given our new addition? I mean, the easiest thing, and I'm not saying we have to do this, the easiest thing would be for you, uh, Neil, to step into Mr. Gray's places for now, and then at the, you know, at the when we redo this again after July 1st, um, we can we can throw it up, but if you want to change There'd it around, there would be now, one problem so. with that though. We couldn't be on the same committee, I don't believe. That is true. Mm -hmm. That is true. Because we're a quorum. We'd be a quorum. Have you talked about which one of you should be on it? <laughs> 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 that was not a trick question. <laughs> it is a trap. <laughs> so the um, only one that would pertain. But that's to only one. Yeah. Right. Airfield policy. <clears throat> Hmm. May I suggest that we just drop the second subcommittee and fold it into the first one, just for the remainder of the year? Since it hasn't met. At this and point. It's, it's somewhat no. duplicative. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably plan. for something like the fuel discounts, maybe that should go through that committee first. Uh, but if everybody's agreeable, that's that's fine. Let's do that. Yeah, I haven't been very clear on what when committees meet. Or well, when they're they called they're be ad hoc. Or... They're ad hoc, basically. Yeah. And then I say Mr. Gasparro is better than most of us at, at calling them. Um, but I am also uh, was going to suggest that uh, I mean we haven't formally designated chairman. We've sort of had leaders of these committees. But I think uh, I would I would. Uh, if we leave it the way it is, I would like to suggest that you be, in essence, the chair of the long range, the first one, the long range plans and policy committee. Okay. Um, so if we do that. You be alone because then you be a quorum all the time. No, I don't want to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> so if we do that, so the first two go to Mr. Drake, Mr. Gasparo, and Ms. Planser. Right. And the second one becomes part of first, or they combine. Right. Uh, and then I would, for the remainder of the year, help Mr. Gasparro on noise, environment, and energy, and I would help Ms. Topham on service and public relations, and we're going to revisit it when... Uh, July 1st. July. Mm -hmm. or, okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then we'll proceed that way. 
You get all that? All right. Thank you all for your patience. Um, are there any commissioners' comments at this point? <laughs> all right. Is there any public comment at this point? You have to be over 18. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Just as a new rule. <laughs> I would like to thank Mr. Drake for that. <laughs> um, I would like to entertain a motion uh, to go into executive session, not to return to public session. To I'm not going to read all these dates, but to review the executive session minutes as enumerated in the agenda to discuss strategy with respect to threat and litigation with respect to the completion of the GA building. The chair has determined that an open session may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the airport commission. And C, to conduct strategy session with respect to collective bargaining where if held an open session may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the airport commission. And to discuss strategy with respect to pending litigation on a personnel matter, the chair has determined that an open session may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the commission. And to consider per the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property in discussing pending litigation uh, in Gatto versus the town. The chair has determined that open session may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating and or litigation position of the airport commission. That is my motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. Is there a second? How do you vote, Mr. Planter? Aye. How do you vote, Mrs. Aye. Topham? Ms. Planzer? Aye. Mr. Gasparro? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you all very much for your patience. Um, I would say that the primary purpose of this session is to bring our new commissioner up to date on what's going on. There aren't any real decisions to be made or, but, uh, so that he's aware of what's going on. No papers to sign. Oh, it's not. Thank you.